You know, some people might suggest that Prince Harry's never truly grown up, you know. He's had everything his own way, looked after, modicoddled, and then, you know, made it out on his own and made an absolute hash of it. Seemingly everything he's turned his hand to has become, well, unstuck. Now, you might say that's been a little bit unkind, but really, what successes has he had? You know, people cite, oh, the Invictus Games. That was set up long before he got involved, and more importantly, it wasn't his own venture. Everybody literally behind the scenes made that happen and decided that this was going to be the project that Harry could lead moving forward. But as you remember, of course, as he moved over to America, he literally offended half of the population, perhaps more, by saying, of course, that the First Amendment was, well, bonkers. And you kind of think, this is your new home. This is the people you should be cultivating and being thrilled that they've actually accepted you within their country. But Harry now is apparently about to face another backlash. And that's all thanks to his own country over here. Let me explain. Good, how are you? It's nice to see you. I think it's just starting to rain. Can you see it? Can you see that rain? I don't know if you can. Yeah, it's just been like this all day. Somebody keeps telling me off for talking about the weather. It's what we do here in Britain. Yeah, I mean, well, we don't have good weather. I know what, I, when, I love it when it turns to summer in Australia and I get all these messages from the wonderful people out in Australia and other sunny parts of the world, I might tell you as well, you know, I know you all have wonderful weather and you love to relish telling me, don't you, Neil? It's lovely here. And you think, yes, but this is our summer. You couldn't really say it's a great, you know, it looks nice, doesn't it? But it's just, well, this is why it's so green. It's well watered, you see. Yes, no, well, I'll be well watered if I don't get on with this, won't I? Back as ever to your own story of the day. A lot of people were shocked, weren't they, when Prince Harry said, you know, the First Amendment bonkers. You kind of think, what a nut job, you know, why would you say something like that? But of course, that's what I mean. He's never really been told off or cautioned or stuff like that. A lot of people, of course, blame the late princess, Princess Diana, because apparently she let him do what he wanted as long as he didn't get caught. Apparently, that was the remit. Well, this is what you get now. And whether you like Meghan Markle or not, it must be at times like having a child because, you know, you kind of wonder what he's going to say. Of course, in public, she likes to get up and say, that's why she married him. He's so smart. The silence around the room was deafening, I'm sure you'll agree. But what's interesting here, you see, is we've just now had a brand new British general election, which has seen the removal of the Conservative government and the incoming Labour Party government. Well, how's that fared out? Well, as ever, you know, the outgoing Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Rishi Sunak, was dishing out gongs and awards to various people. And what he's got next, which is always fascinating, I find, is the offer of a lot of money for his memoirs, not just as Chancellor, but of course at the time, the period that he had as the British Prime Minister. Now, according to a person who worked alongside Rishi uh, very, very closely, I can't tell you how close I know this person who worked alongside him, fascinating really when you think because this story is going to be interesting but one of the biggest setbacks that Mr Sunak had apparently was when Harry came over last year to the British courts to defend himself against the hacking charges and all that sort of stuff and remember he basically trashed the government and said Britain was at rock bottom virtually broken unprecedented sort of thing to say about the government sitting literally in the United Kingdom and definitely from an ex-royal former royal whatever you want to call him. So much so I told you at the time uh, that His Majesty the King offered some sort of mumbling apology on behalf of his youngest son. Totally embarrassing because obviously they had a weekly audience, uh, you know, discussing the matters of state and stuff like that. Apparently that's going to be going into further detail of the pushback and the kickback and the explosion of that in the memoir. And rightly so, because it did cause a lot of problems. So much so it gave ammunition to the rival party in the House of Commons. And Harry didn't even live here. So if he cared so much about it, why did he disappear? Once again, whether he realises it or not, as ever we have to say allegedly, Harry's dropped himself right in it. And now Mr Sunak is free from the powers of government and not necessarily having to curtail, of course, to His Majesty the King, of which I have to say is incredibly respectful and they had a very strong, close relationship. But I would say this, that who could blame Mr Sunak for revealing the hardship that was dropped upon him from the loose tongue of the former royal defending himself over hacking charges that allegedly even he couldn't remember. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.